Uh, in this lecture and the next lecture, we are going to discuss how to solve first order partial differential equations in the sense that of how to obtain general solutions. Uh, so, in today's lecture, we will discuss about general solutions to linear and semilinear equations uh, because it is easier and we see how to extend these ideas to the case of quasilinear equation in the next lecture. So, the outline of today's lecture is first we discuss a useful idea in finding general solutions and then we move on to linear equations with constant coefficients because that is the simplest case and from there we get an idea and try to solve linear equations with variable coefficients. Same linear equations follows very uh, similarly to linear equations because the part where the first order partial derivatives appear in both linear and semi linear equation they look alike. So, a useful idea in finding general solutions. So, general solutions to linear and semi linear equations can be found using very simple ideas. We will see in the next lecture how to generalize or extend these ideas to the case of quasi linear equations. The method resulting out of these ideas is a famous Lagrange's method for finding general solutions of quasi linear equations. So, let us discuss a linear and semi linear equations now and what is the key idea behind this method. So, first of all observe that the partial differential equation is linear in first order derivatives. The terms involving first order derivatives look like a directional derivative. We will see more on this in the next slides. Now, what happens is a change of independent variables will then convert our PDE into an ODE and we are experts in solving ODEs. That is why ODEs are easier to solve. Okay. So, that is why this strategy we will follow. Recall linear equation of first order is of this form a x y u x plus b x y u y equal to c x y u plus d x y. This we denote by L and the coefficients a, b, c, d are c 1 functions of omega 2. Omega 2 is a subset of R 2. Of course, there is another way to think of this as a special case of quasi linear equations in which case a of x y z will appear, but a of x y z is independent of z. So, asking it that a of x y z is c 1 of omega 3 is same as asking a of x y z is c 1 of omega 2 because a does not depend on z. And we do not want both these coefficients of the partial derivatives to vanish at the same time in the sense at the same point in omega 2. So, at every point in omega 2 at least one of them should be non-zero. And then semi linear equation of first order looks like this a x y u x plus b x y u y the left hand side is exactly same as that a of L whereas the right hand side c of x y u that is the semi linear equation and the assumptions natural are a b or c 1 of omega 2 and c is c 1 of omega 3. Of course, uh, omega d's are subsets of r d, d equal to 2 and 3. Omega 2 is a projection of omega 3 to the x y plane and a square plus b square is not equal to 0 on the domain omega 2. Let us see an observation that first order partial derivatives appear in the same way for both L and SL we have already observed this. Namely this is the part A x y u x plus B x y u y. This is the left hand side in both L and SL. If either A or B is a 0 function what does that mean? Imagine A is 0 then this above expression is simply B x y u y and the equation would look like B x y u y equal to C x y u plus D in the case of L and b x y u y equal to c of x y u in the case of s l. That means, there is no derivative with respect to x will appear if a is 0. In other words, it is a ODE, it reduces to ODE. Therefore, solving l and s l in such a case is same as solving ODEs, it is no different from solving ODEs. Now, we ask a question. Do not we like if it is true that either a or b is 0 function in every semi linear equation? 
Answer is yes, of course we like it, but we know that uh, we cannot expect that. But we can make it happen, we can make it happen after a change of variables. We will, we are going to do that now. Okay, first let us understand the simplest case, it is a linear equation with a constant coefficients. So, let us look at this equation a u x plus b u y equal to 0, coefficients are constant, so a and b are real numbers, at least one of them is non-zero real number. Okay, if one of them is 0, it is a ODE, so we do not want to discuss, so you, you can as well assume both a, b are non-zero. Of course, it is not needed for the purposes of our lecture, but you can imagine that uh, both are non-zero numbers, that is when uh, it is not clear what you want, to, what you can do immediately. Okay, if any one of them is 0, it was ODE you have already solved. So, we place this assumption that one of these AB must be non-zero real number. Let us look at an example. Of course, in this example, I have made it uh, B equal to 0 and A equal to 1. This is just an example. This will guide us in uh, further proceedings. So, let us look at this example UX equal to 0. Its general solution is given by UXY equal to FY where f is any differentiable function because you need to differentiate this and check that derivative is 0. So, derivative should exist that is reasonable to assume f is a differentiable function though uh, it does not matter here even if f is just a function not even continuous does not matter because when you write the partial derivatives uh, expression with respect to x uh, all difference quotients are 0. Okay. So, how did we arrive at the above answer? it looked like ODE in the variable x. So, A u x plus B u y equal to 0 means the directional derivative of u in the direction A b is 0. In terms of the notations, it is like this d A b u equal to 0. This looks similar to u x equal to 0 u x equal to 0 is nothing but d 1 0 the vector A b is 1 0. So, it is a directional derivative of u in the direction of 1 0 that is the partial derivative with respect to x. So, of course, d a b u equal to 0 is more general than u x equal to 0. But important thing is that it is a directional derivative. We know that direction derivative is like one variable derivative. Okay. It looks like uh, one of the other variables is not there in the equation exactly like u x equal to 0 y is absent. So, in this case we have to find out what are the variables? One of them is there in this equation, but another one is not there. We need to identify. In this case, it is very simple. X is there because partial derivative of u with respect to x is there. Y is not in the equation. That is very obvious here. Okay. Now, let us understand u x equal to 0 more closely. u x equal to 0, it means that u is constant on every line which is parallel to x axis. Parallel to x axis means y equal to constant at the equation. So, solution we saw u of x y equal to f of y. So, if y is constant, u x y is constant. So, in general, we expect by analogy, uh, in this case, u is constant on every line which is parallel to x axis. Now, in this case, I expect u is constant on any line having the direction a b. In the case of u x, the direction is 1 0, right parallel to x axis has the direction 1 0. So, therefore, I expect from this experience that solutions of d a b u equal to 0 are constant on any line having the direction a b. We are going to prove this. So, in the next slide we compare these two equations side by side. First let us look at uh, u x equal to 0 and a b we need to make some special numbers. So, a b we take 1 1. Okay. So, now a u x equal to 0 solution is f y. So, whenever y equal to 1 that is a line parallel to x axis it has a direction 1 0 and u is f of 1 u is constant. Now, if you take any other line parallel to x axis that means any line having the direction 1 0 will look like y equal to k for some k and u on that is f of k. So, it is constant on each line parallel to x axis. Now, in this case u x plus u y equal to 0, this is having the direction 1 1, 1 1 is this direction 
the line y equal to x has the direction 1 1. So, u should be constant along each of these lines parallel to the line y equal to x. Any line parallel to y equal to x looks like y minus x equal to k for some k and u is equal to f of y minus x. You can check by substituting in this equation that this u is indeed a solution to this equation. So, we have obtained a general solution in the case of a u x plus b u y equal to 0. So, we need to find what that is we got from a b equal to 1 1 if it is general a b what will this be we will see that formula. Okay, now, how do I extend these ideas to linear equations, but with variable coefficients, how will we do that? So, what to do that is the first question. So, notice that for every point in omega 2 this a x y u x plus b x y u y is also a directional derivative of u at the point x y, but the catch is that the direction depends on the point x y it is not constant a comma b as in the constant coefficients case. Here the direction is a x y comma b x y it varies from point to point. Okay, this is the difference otherwise it is also directional derivative. Now, can we generalize from constant coefficients case and say that u is constant along each line having this direction we would like to say that. Of course, what it means that a line having this direction uh, is questionable because this changes from point to point right. In the constant coefficients case it was just a comma b it never depended on x y, but now it depends that is why I have put in quotes. Can we expect such a result? Okay. Having this direction means this is a slope y coordinate by x coordinate b by a that is a slope of the line. What line x y is varying b, b by a will vary from point to point. So, As the direction depends on the point answer to the above question is as the direction depends on the point x y in omega 2 we cannot talk of lines, but an infinitesimal version of lines works. What is that we are going to present that soon. It means that we need to consider curves with slopes b by a we cannot say lines all the time. Okay. Consider curves now lines are also after all curves of having a constant slope that is why they are lines. But here we have to admit now more general things than lines. So, we admit curves with slopes b by a that is ok. Of course, one condition is that we have a in the denominator. So, we must assume that a is not 0 in the domain well, let us assume that we will assume that. And we will also show that uh, does not make much difference if you have not assumed that a is not equal to 0 throughout it is enough at a point that a is non zero. We know that every point x naught y naught in omega 2 one of them is non zero a or b right. So, we assume that a is non zero and we can do the things if a is zero we will work with b. So, that can be done. Okay. So, this means what curves with this slopes means you have to look at solutions of this ODE this is the slope of the curve at a point x y and that I am saying should be b by a. So, if b were and a were constants the solutions are straight lines. So, now these are curves. So, dy by dx equal to b x y by a x y. Okay. So, we have uh, got hold of analogous things to straight lines which are curves with slopes b by a. Okay. So, we assume that a is not equal to 0 on omega 2. We will come back to this discussion after we finish uh, doing this analysis. Okay, where we say that uh, does not matter you, you do not have to assume that it is non-zero throughout omega 2 because of certain things which will come into the analysis soon. Okay. There is nothing that you gain by assuming that a is not 0 and throughout omega 2 we will come back to that. So, let zeta be a solution to this okay, defined on some interval j in x. Okay. Whenever this is a solution one observation is that u is constant along this curve x comma zeta of x. x comma zeta of x as x varies describes a curve and u of x comma zeta of x is constant whenever zeta is a solution to uh, this ODE. We can verify that. So, d by dx of u of x zeta x we want to compute this. Now, x dependence is there in both the coordinates here as well as here both the components. 
So, first you have to differentiate u with respect to x and derivative of x with respect to x is 1, then differentiate u with respect to y and differentiate zeta f x with respect to x that is what the chain rule says. Okay. So, that will give us a zeta dash of x d zeta by dx through this dependence we get this. So, as I told you chain rule will keep coming definitely throughout this lecture and the next one, but chain, chain rule if you remove then I think you cannot do PDE. So, we can we may also say that this is one of the most fundamental results in differential calculus. It does not look like a big result to us, but it plays a role everywhere. Okay. So, question uh, good, but tell me how to get a formula for solutions. Okay, you have observed that if you have a solution that will be constant along curves which are solutions of this ODE, fine. But from there how do you get formula for the solution? That is a question. The answer is that do not worry using this family of solutions to 1 because it is a ODE right. So, it solutions will be a 1 parameter family. So, using that family we convert our PDE into ODE. Okay. We convert our PDE into ODE and ODEs may be solved to get solutions. So, now you are as good as your ability to solve ODEs is. We will do this shortly. Of course, this assumes that you are able to solve this equation 1 get that family and then converting the PDE into ODE is very simple and your ability to solve the ODE it hinges on that, but definitely there is an algorithm. Okay. So, we follow a common strategy to solve L and SL because as we observed the LHS in both the equations and L and SL are is the same, both are the same. So, now we have to do what is called change of coordinates, sometimes called change of variables. So, suppose that we have a change of coordinates from x y to xi eta and vice versa, change of variables are always like you are going from x y. Uh, description to xi eta description and you should be able to come back only then it is useful otherwise things are lost. Okay. So, change of variable always uh, both sides and vice versa given by this. So, xi equal to small phi of x y eta equal to small c psi of x y and x equal to capital phi of xi eta y equal to capital psi of xi eta. It is very important to write this kind of setup whenever you do change of variables so that you will not have confusion. This is another part change of, uh, chain rule will be used. Chain rule as such is easy, okay, very easy uh, you can apply, but here when you do change of coordinate that is where your real test of understanding will come and to be careful better you always use this kind of notations. Okay. Normally people write xi equal to xi of x y, eta equal to eta of x y avoid that that is the first uh, message. Okay. So, this is the change of coordinates. Uh, obviously, it means that uh, a certain domain has this change of coordinates in R2. A function now under this change of coordinates u of x y gets transformed to a new function call it new function new notation w of xi eta. Do not call u of xi eta that will cause confusion w of xi eta and vice versa of course hmm, by this formula u of x y right, but x equal to phi xi eta y equal to psi xi eta. So, you substitute you get a function of xi eta. Similarly here u x y equal to w of phi x y psi x y. Now, we illustrate this in a picture. See here we have uh, the rectangular coordinates x y and we have gone from here to a xi eta coordinate system through these functions small phi small psi. Uh, xi equal to constant are this blue uh, curves, eta equal to constant are this black curves. From here you can come back via this transformation and if you have a function defined from here x y thing to r you can define a function from xi eta description to r. Okay. Basically it is the address that you are changing with respect to the new coordinates. Earlier to describe a point in the plane you are giving a x address and y, y address x coordinate and y coordinate. Now, for example, you are using a different coordinate system if you want to describe this this may be eta equal to some number c 1 this may be xi equal to some number c 2. So, c 1 c 2 will uniquely fix you. 
For example, look at our globe, you can easily uh, give coordinates of any location using uh, longitude and lang lang latitude uh, numbers, right? It's exactly like that. So, it is a different change of here it is a change of coordinates. So, you need to give address fully, full address, okay. So, how PDE changes under change of variables, very important, we need to do that. So, AUX plus BUI, BXY UI is our uh, LHS in both L and SL equations. Now, we will change it to Xi eta coordinates, very easy. We have to look at the relations that we have between U and W and differentiate and find out what is UX, what is UI, substitute for UX and UY. Similarly, for X and Y here you substitute, then you will get the new uh, expression. So, UXY, UX is derivative of W, look X appears both in this location and this location. So, differentiate W with respect to the first variable which is Xi at this point phi x y psi x y phi x y psi x y and then differentiate phi with respect to x at the point x y. Then differentiate w with respect to the second coordinate that is w eta at this point phi x y psi x y this is chain rule and then differentiate psi with respect to x at the point x y. Okay. Similarly, you do for u y. Now, substitute ux ui in this expression a ux plus b ui. Okay. So, you get this expression. What have you gained? Nothing because earlier it was a ux plus b ui. Now, you got something into w xi plus something else into w eta. Now, the coefficients are all functions of xi uh, eta. You have to convert them into xi eta because phi x is a function of x y, a is also a function of x y, but you know the expression of xy in terms of xi eta, substitute that you get this. So, these are the functions evaluated at these points x equal to this, y equal to this. So, we have got one expression in xy coordinates equal to another expression, you may call this capital A of xi eta w xi plus capital B of uh, capital B of xi eta into w eta. So, we have not gained anything, but this is where we can play because xi eta is something that I want to make a choice so that it will be useful for me, convenient to me. In fact, we wanted to convert it to ODE. So, we would like to remove uh, one of these derivatives. How do I remove one of the derivatives? Just ask that xi eta should be such that this guy is 0 or maybe this guy is 0. Then it becomes a ODE in one of the variables. That is the idea. Okay. So, choose psi so that this features only derivative with respect to xi. I decided let only derivative with respect to xi be there. So, that means I do not want this term, therefore I demand this guy is 0, choose psi such that this is 0. Okay. This forces psi to satisfy this. Of course, if you have said there is I do not want derivative with respect to eta, you would have said this equal to 0, but if you see equation is the same right, a phi x plus b phi y equal to 0, so the equation is the same equation. Okay. So, uh, let us find a psi with this property. Now, this is also first order PDE, right? We are trying to solve one first order PDE, we ended up with another first order PDE. Uh, so, what have we gained? Thankfully, this equation is a homogeneous equation. So, that helps us. Right hand side is 0, linear homogeneous. How does that help? Earlier, we observed that every solution of this particular equation is constant along solutions of some ODE, which is this, we observed this. So, from theory of ODEs, we know that solutions of the above ODE, this ODE form a one parameter family. So, assume that solutions are given implicitly by eta of x y equal to k, where k is a parameter. Why one parameter family? Because uh, this is the first order ODE, uh, one initial condition you give and you get a solution that is a parameter. Okay. Same thing we can express uh, differently, but that is why I am assuming that they are given in this form. Once you have this form, you set psi equal to eta, psi of x y equal to eta of x y. So, you know psi now. Now, you need to still find phi. So, you have found, uh, set psi like this, it means your uh, 
PD the transformed equation is good because you do not have this term ok, but phi is still there. So, we need to find phi only then we will have a change of coordinates we will do that. Now, having chosen psi choose phi to be a C1 function such that this Jacobian is never 0, the Jacobian is never 0. The Jacobian condition above will guarantee that this function x y going to phi x y psi x y has a local inverse and phi i psi being C1 functions the inverse will also be C1 function that means we have a diffeomorphism. So, we have to apply what is called inverse function theorem therefore, this is a second most important theorem in differential calculus of multivariables inverse function theorem which is equivalent to another theorem which is called implicit function theorem. You can you can prove one from each other. So, that is why both are equivalent and you must be thorough with application of these theorems how to apply these theorems. So, the inverse function may be expressed now that x as a function of xi eta and y as a function of xi eta you can do that. But if you look at the inverse function theorem the assumption will be at some point x 0 y 0 Jacobian is non 0 then a neighborhood of x 0 y 0 you have this as a diffeomorphism. So, inverse function theorem conclusions are what are called local even if you have the Jacobian everywhere non 0 you cannot say that throughout the domain x y on which this is non 0 this defines a inverse function. Uh, diffeomorphism you cannot that is why a local inverse is always a conclusion from the standard inverse function theorem. What is local inverse? It means each point there is an open set on which the above conclusions hold and the open set need not be omega 2. Thus the LHS of both L and SL which is here AUX plus BUY becomes this. Okay, where we are just writing where these coefficients are evaluated at they are evaluated at this w xi is at xi eta. So, the right hand side is a function of xi eta. So, we can give a name to that let us call it a of xi eta as this quantity. Therefore, this LHS of L and SL becomes simply a xi eta w xi of xi eta. So, no eta de derivative here. So, it is going to become ODE. Yeah, the linear equation now becomes this. This is LHS right hand side C of x y you express as xi eta by this change of variables use w and d also you express using the change of variables d of x y capital D of xi eta that is a relation. Now, you may write it like this it is a ODE right it is a linear ODE. therefore, it, it can be solved. Now, let us see what happens to semi linear equations. The PDA will transform to this because right hand side there is nothing to do much it is just C of small c of x y u earlier now it becomes capital C of xi eta w. Now, you write like this and the equation is non linear ODE. The ease of finding a solution depends heavily on the nonlinearity the capital C and capital A. But we know that it has solution as the right hand side is a local ellipsis function solutions are there. Once the function w is determined function u is known now we know right the correspondence between u and w. Now, a small remark on our assumption that we assumed this right a is not equal to 0 and omega 2 and one more thing we assumed on the way after choosing psi we said choose another phi c1 function such that the Jacobian is never 0 on omega 2. However, we met inverse function on the way that theorem even if you with go with the global uh, conditions like this, this this one it will give you only local conclusions there is a problem of the inverse function theorem. So, we did not gain much despite our global assumptions that tells that a hey, there is no need to assume globally assume that a is non zero at some point x not y not the conclusion that you get will be in a neighborhood around x not y not. In any case even if you assume a is not equal to 0 in omega 2 
when you went to inverse function theorem it only gave you conclusions around the point x not y not. So, as a consequence the change of coordinates you will find in a neighborhood of that point whichever point you have fixed here I have fixed x y. So, but there are also a global inverse function theorems this is just for you to uh, be aware of global conclusions are possible from global inverse function theorem for this I refer you to this book uh, of multivariable real analysis uh, volume 1 um, it is called differentiation it is authored by Dwister, Matt and Kolk. They also have a second volume which is about integration. These are very slightly fat books, but uh, they write very nicely. So, let us now specialize to constant coefficients. Okay, so, solutions to dy by dx equal b by a because we have not yet solved a u x plus b u y equal to 0 so far, now we are going to solve. So, equal to b by a are given by b x minus a y equal to k where k is a parameter. Choose psi as b x minus a y okay, it is solutions okay, d a d y equal to b d x. So, b uh, uh, after integrating you get b x minus a y equal to constant that is how we get psi. Now, you have to choose phi the only condition on phi it should be a C1 function and the Jacobian non-zero. So, this is the Jacobian psi I know the derivatives I have put in here this is psi x this is psi y you want this to be non-zero. In this case there is an easy choice for phi it is ax plus by. What is the relation between like ax plus by equal to constant and bx minus a y equal to constant? They, they are perpendicular they are like x axis and y axis right. Okay. Uh, so, note that this change of coordinates x y going to a x plus b y b x minus a y you may call this as xi equal to phi of x y this is eta equal to psi of x y these are global it is an invertible it is a linear transformation R2 it is invertible it is global. This is uh, linear no? linear if things are invertible you, you will get uh, global, but in the general situation these are nonlinear equations. Okay, special case of constant coefficients let us continue uh, the equation a u x plus b u y now becomes a square plus b square into w i equal to 0. Now, I need not even bother to change this into some new coordinates because this is non-zero right you can cancel and conclude w i equal to 0 and solution it means it is a function of eta alone right w i equal to 0 it is a ODE you see from a u x plus b u i equal to 0 we have got a o d e w i equal to 0 of course after a change of variable. So, this implies that w is simply a function of eta. Now, what is eta we can substitute back get the u u of x y equal to w of uh, phi x y psi x y, but w I know is only arbitrary function of second coordinate that is f of psi of x y and what is your psi of x y? b x minus a y. Okay. So, I just uh, uh, connect it back to our original equation u x equal to 0 that example u x equal to 0 equation means a is 1 b is 0. So, therefore, it is arbitrary function of minus y arbitrary function of minus y is same as arbitrary function of y. So, we got back. So, observe that solutions do not depend on the choice of y at all. Okay. Now, you see b x minus a y equal to constant the function is constant on that line. So, this again means that u is constant on any line which is having the direction of a b. Now, let us look at an example x u x plus y u y equal to 2 u uh, here I have said using change of coordinates reduce this equation and find the general solution. So, this is the recall of the change of variables you have to do this and then go and substitute for u x u y expressions inside this get the expression uh, x phi x plus y phi y w xi plus x i x plus y u psi y w eta. Now, set this equal to 0 find solutions of this. Okay. So, that means dy by dx will do y by x 
and solutions are given by x by y equal to constant that is a family therefore psi of x y is psi x by y. Now you have to find phi choose phi equal to y and uh, Jacobian condition will be satisfied. So, we have got now xi and eta uh, this is a function of phi of x y eta is a function of x y psi of x y is equal to x by y and then you get the relation between x and y and uh, xi and eta then the LHS becomes y w xi because we made sure that w eta coefficient is 0. So, y w xi but what is y? y is xi. So, it is xi w xi is the LHS. What is RHS? It is 2u so it is 2w. So, xi w xi equal to 2w. So, w xi equal to 2 by xi into w it uh, suggests that we should avoid xi equal to 0. So, solution will be this w xi eta equal to f of eta into xi square after solving this. So, this is a way to solve using change of variables and then going back to x and y uh, we get u x y equal to y square f of x by y. Now, it is clear that uh, it is defined for all x and every y such that x by y belongs to domain of f. So, you choose any arbitrary function that you like of one variable and x by y should make sense that means y should be non-zero and then it should be in the domain of f. So, you get so many solutions. Now, this is another example where the right hand side is u square nonlinear equation right. So, but as a PDE it is a semi linear equation LH is the same. So, we can skip the computations finally you end up with w xi equal to 1 by xi w square actually what you get is xi w xi equal to w square. So, I take it this side. If you solve you get this answer w xi equal to minus 1 by f eta plus log mod xi f is an arbitrary function going back to x y coordinates we get this expression. So, this clearly tells y equal to 0 has to be avoided because logarithm is there and once y is non-zero it is fine. So, and x by y should belong to domain of f. So, choose any f of one variable function of one variable with some domain and then uh, this solution is valid for all those x y such that y is non-zero x by y belongs to domain of f and log mod y plus f of x by y is non-zero. So, domain of u may be written down that is not important okay. one can always write down. So, summarize what we did is that linear and semi linear equations were transformed to ODEs by a change of variables and general solutions were obtained. Two examples were presented to concretely illustrate the general algorithm that we have uh, presented uh, uh, for finding general solutions to L and SL. So, in the next lecture we are going to see how these ideas can be gen generalized or extended to the case of quasi linear equations. Quasi linear equations will uh, pose a new uh, troubles we will see how to overcome them. Thank you.